Hello friends, welcome to yet another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I will be bringing you a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19 and Remdesivir. Remdesivir is a drug which has got the EUA, that is the Emergency Authorization Approval from the Food and Drug Administration USA. For the starters, I would like to tell you that the WHO has already declared the SARS-CoV-2 induced COVID-19 as a global pandemic. More than 10 million people have been affected by it and more than 5 million people have already lost their lives. Scientists throughout the world are really trying meticulously in order to come up with various vaccines and various drugs in order to curb and curtail this specific pandemic. In my previous videos, I have already talked about the virology, the pathophysiology, the specific drugs like tocilizumab, remdesivir, part 1. And then I have also talked about sarilumab. I have also talked about the complement inhibitors. I have talked about the CD147, the H2 inhibitors, the chloroquine plus azithromycin treatment and so on. So in this very video, I'll be specifically talking about remdesivir in a detailed manner. Now remdesivir, what is remdesivir? Remdesivir is also known as GS5734. It's a pro-drug, means it's not an active drug. It has to be activated via metabolism in the human body, right? It's metabolized inside the cell. Now remdesivir was first designed and first manufactured by Gilead Life Sciences USA. It was mainly manufactured and designed to curb and curtail the Ebola virus outbreak. Now, it didn't really get through the phase 3 clinical trial when it comes to Ebola. It was also a little bit effective against the Marburg virus. And it has been seen to be effective to the extent against the SARS-CoV-1 and the MERS-CoV coronaviruses. Now, what happens is this remdesivir can inhibit, can potentially inhibit the NSP12 or the RDRP present in the coronavirus, specifically in the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus. RDRP means RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Now what happens is the SARS-CoV-2 virus goes inside the cells, the viral in ingress happens while it's binding to the H2 protein, a type 1 membrane protein which is also a specific carboxymetalloprotease. And when the spike protein binds, it gets cleaved and the S1 domain binds, right, via the priming event. And S2 is the membrane attachment domain. And then the viral ingress happens and then it takes the root, root of endocytosis via the lysosome to autophagosome. Auto and then it takes the ergic root. And then the virion RDRP is synthesized and ultimately the virion particles are synthesized and released via the production of genomic and subgenomic RNAs. So what happens is when it's got to be prudent when it comes to RDRP because if we are able to successfully inhibit the RDRP, it wouldn't be able to form its subgenomic mRNA, right? Because SARS-CoV-2 is a non-segmented positive strand RNA virus with a genome size of about 28 to 32 kilobase pairs. Now what happens is the specific SARS-CoV-2 can be inhibited if we inhibit the RDRP. Now, in my previous video, I had talked about the RB, R, RDRP dynamics, the NSP12 dynamics. So, the NSP12 has got low processivity on its own. In my video of DNA replication, I had explained to you the processivity, that is the ability of the polymerase to tether or to stay attached to the template while forming or while catalyzing the formation or synthesis of the daughter strand. So, DNA polymerase 3 in case of the Prokaryotic system, Escherichia coli is highly processive. Same way, NSP12 on its own is not highly processive. When it binds to the cofactor non-structural proteins like NSP7 and a dimer of NSP8, then it becomes highly processive, right? Now, NSP12, when it comes to SARS-CoV-2, the NSP12, the SARS-CoV-2 NSP12 has got a specific NIRAN domain which I have already described to you in my previous video regarding the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So you can refer to that video if you want to understand RDRP in extreme detail. Now the Niran domain has also got serine 681. At the 681 first residue, you have got a serine amino acid. Now what happens is this remdesivir prodrug, when it enters the cell membrane, it can bind to that specific serine 681. Now, before it binds to specific serine 681, what happens is it gets metabolized in the cell, right? So, it gets metabolized via hydrolysis, via various hydrolysis. And then what happens is 
it becomes or it is converted into an allylene derivative then phosphoramidase enzymes convert it into a nucleotide monophosphate group or nucleotide monophosphate compound and then the cellular kinases convert it into remdesivir triphosphate which is the active molecule the active component of the drug that would really be able to inhibit the RNA dependent RNA polymerase or NSP12 in case of SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, when it binds to the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, how can it bind? First of all, it's a absolute analog or it's a tremendously high level analog of adenosine. So, remdesivir you can call is a one prime cyano analog of adenosine meaning that it can mimic adenosine but it's not a purely identical copy of adenosine it's an analog now what happens is the rdrp the active site or the binding domain or the niran domain of rdrp gets kind of fooled and not gets kind of fooled in a vague sense means this specific remdesivir tp means rem tp or the active form of remdesivir which is the remdesivir triphosphate has got 800 times more affinity than ATP towards this RDRP. Okay, so when it will be incorporating adenine in the form of ATP because ATP would be the incoming nucleotide that would act as a substrate for the template elongation or for the daughter strand elongation. That time what happens if this REMTP is present, remdesivir triphosphate, the active form of remdesivir, then remdesivir TP acts as the more preferable form by a virtue of 800 times because it has got a KD 800 times lesser while binding to RDRP compared to ATP. Now this has been proved experimentally. Now once it has got attached, the one prime cyano group keeps on tethered with the serine 681 at the Niran domain. Now what it does is it still has this REMTP still provides the three prime OH group thereby three more nucleotides can be added but the fourth nucleotide cannot be added because the RNA polymerase RNA dependent RNA polymerase or NSP12 of this specific SARS-CoV-2 virus gets halted gets you can say stressed too much because it cannot really come out of the binding that it had or that it has with the one prime cyano group and that amino acid residue is S6, S or serine 681 so after I plus 3, I is the location at which this specific REMTP got bound to the daughter strand and then the RNA duplex gets destabilized and which leads to the chain termination. But what happens is this chain termination is a delayed type chain termination. Now what is delayed chain termination and why does it happen in this case? What happens is RNA polymerase would try to come out of this specific predicament by trying to dissociate from the one prime cyano group which has associated or which has got bound to its serine 681. Now while trying to do that, while trying to achieve this feat, it, it tries to realign the primer and template as a last, you can say, resort of hope. So while it tries to realign the primer and the template, it also tries to go for backtracking, primer backtracking mechanism because I had explained to you in my previous videos that pyrophosphorolytic editing, hydrolyt hydrolytic editing could be done by RNA polymerase too. But it tries to do that, but it's still the one prime cyano group does not get dissociated from the S681 and thus eventually what happens is after I plus 3, three more nucleotide residues are added, but eventually what happens is we have delayed chain termination process and thereby the RNA dependent RNA polymerase is rendered incapable of completing the entire RNA synthesis and thus the viral you can say infection can be seized. In very few cases what happens the primer can be extended and here there is a good player known as NSP14 which is the viral exonuclease 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activities of proof or you can say proofreading activity is possessed by NSP14 but NSP14 till now hasn't evolved or hasn't mutated this much that it can take out the 
remdp or remdesivir triphosphate the active form of remdesivir from the specific rna iran domain so this is a danger that it, it can mutate its nsp14 at the nsp14 rna region and then this nsp14 could be rendered effective it could render itself the effectiveness to take out that r that remdesivir triphosphate and then this remdesivir drug could be completely ineffective but till now it hasn't been seen in any kind of corona in any kind of specifically sars cov2 sars cov2 coronaviruses now what happens is in various experiments in various clinical trials it has been seen also that once you conduct an experiment in in vitro trials or in vivo also in the mice model preclinical trials and in vitro epithelial cell human lung epithelial cells and what has been seen is they conducted a series of three experiments one was remdesivir plus the sars cov2 virus and infected in the cell and the sars cov2 virus had proper nsp14 now here it could the remdesivir was able to inhibit the you can say rna synthesis inhibit the rdrp or nsp12 t line exchange fine but in the second experiment when the nsp12 was inhibited by remdesivir and nsp14 was mutated in a suppressor way that it lost its you can say 5 to 3 prime exonuclease activity in those specific cell lines and preclinical models it was seen it was observed that the rdrp inhibition was extremely you can say proliferated or extremely elevated compared to its counterpart where the nsp14 had no mutations whatsoever also in nsp14 knockout it was also seen that the rdrp was really and completely blocked by the remdesivir because in some cases what happens nsp14 can till an extent take out the remdp and can continue or can cause the rna synthesis to flourish under cert, uh, under you can say certain circumstances rare events but once you knock it down or you mutate it in such a way that it loses its active site to perform such activity of 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity then what happens is remdesivir becomes much more potent in inhibiting the rdrp activity now many clinical trials are underway it has also entered the phase 3 clinical trials anthony fauci the director of niaad has already declared the interim results by virtue of which it got the eua from fda that it could reduce till 40% recovery time in severely ill covid-19 patients and various trials are going on along with remdesivir in a coupling manner in remdesivir plus tocilizumab i have made the video on tocilizumab also il6 receptor antagonist and the main trials have also focused on the trials which happened priorly also focused on rhesus monkeys where remdesivir was able to attenuate the covid-19 and could easily you can say inhibit the nsp12 or rdrp of sars cov2 virus in the rhesus monkey model and in the pre pre clinical mice model too then what are the side effects so the most profound side the most common side effects let's begin with is nausea vomiting but more profound side side effects have come which are you can say hypotension elevated serum creatinine level and elevated allylene amino transferase or amino transferase enzymes specifically the allylene amino transferase right it is also known as transaminitis the liver transaminases or amino transferases get elevated so this has been the most you can say relevant side effect which has been perpetrated by remdesivir as far as the pharmacodynamics or, or you can say pharmacokinetics are concerned then remdesivir is administered only intravenously it cannot be taken orally next up is remdesivir is administered at 200 mg dose on the first day then the dose is tamed to half that is 100 mg for the next 9 days 
So for 10 days you can take remdesivir and hope that the recovery time will be reduced in critically ill COVID-19 patients. So that is all the conceptual prowess you needed to attain in order to comprehend this lecture. If you really like the lecture kindly hit the like button and in my description section I have given, I have provided you all the links of the research papers that I have followed in order to completely analyze remdesivir and present this lecture in front of you. I have also put the link of my Facebook page. You can like my Facebook page and directly contact me via messenger so that you can get my prompt reply. And I have posted all the COVID-19 video links in the description section for you so that you can watch any of the videos that you find are relevant to you. In the comment section, you can, al you can always post your queries and comments without any hesitation and I'll be trying to reply as soon as possible. If you have again liked the video, kindly hit the subscribe button and do not forget to ring the bell to hit the notification bell in order to be aware, in order to be notified whenever my next video comes online. Thanks a lot. See you soon.